Hi, welcome again to Spieß Hecker. Refinishing new replacement parts, whether metal or plastic, is part of the everyday work of a modern body shop. Over the next few minutes, I want to show you how using our Vario Primer Surface of 5340 ensures a quick, efficient and simple start to this process. What I've tried to simulate here is a typical repair job that you see every day in body shops. We've got a new plastic bumper, a new wing, blend into the door. Now, of course, in a training centre, we don't always have a car available, so unfortunately, I've had to use a body shell on this occasion. However, the process will be the same, and of course, I'm going to show you the end result when we've finished. The main focus of this, though, will be on preparation of both the plastic part and the new fender, and I will, of course, recap the application of the base coat as we go. Sometimes we can be lucky and the bumper will arrive pre-primed. And in this case, you would just need to sand it lightly and apply base coat colour directly to it. However, I would still recommend that you apply a coat of our primer surface to the bumper to help with base coat coverage and to provide a more stable substrate. In this case, this bumper is unprimed and so we need to prepare it well to ensure that we don't have any problems later on. Whilst I'm preparing this, two main things that I think about. Good sanding to get good adhesion and also I want to reduce static charge. We recommend that any new plastic parts are tempered before any preparation work is undertaken. Doing this will drive any remaining release agents to the surface which can easily be removed during the cleaning and sanding process. All you need to do is simply put the part in the oven and temper for 60 minutes at 60 to 60 to 5 degrees C. If possible, do this in combination with another job that's in the oven at the same time. After tempering, scuff the surface with a fine abrasive pad which is soaked in a suitable static reducing cleaning solvent, taking care to thoroughly scuff all the parts of the panel, paying particular attention to the corners and edges. Clean off any dried residues with more solvent and then allow the part to thoroughly dry. Alternatively, you can re-temper the part for a thir further 30 minutes at 60 degrees C. When dealing with a new OEM replacement part like this, one of the prime objectives is to leave as much of the e-coat in place as possible as this provides the highest level of corrosion protection and adhesion for the new part. To do this, all I need is to simply clean the panel and inspect it, and if everything's okay, I can apply my primer surfacer directly to it without any sanding. That's one of the major advantages of this product. If there is some damage, all I need to do is sand locally and again if I go through to bare metal don't worry too much as this primer surface has good anti-corrosion properties and is particularly suitable for small areas of sand through. Having said that if it's a whole panel that you've taken to bare metal I would look for a different solution as this would not be the right product in this case. That's all of the preparation done time now to put the car in the oven ready for final masking and then we're going to paint the job. As you can see Bumper's nicely prepared and ready to go, likewise the fender, even the door, sanded, prepared for blending. Join me again in a few minutes in the mixing room when I'll show you how to mix the primer surfacer itself. Take your time and refer to the TDS before you start mixing. If you take a look inside, you will see clearly described mixing steps for wet on wet for both metal and plastic substrates. Additionally, should you need to, you can also use this product as a sanding surfacer, of course. Coming back to the wet on wet, we use as the serial component in the mixing, the normal thinner, whilst for plastics, we take, of course, the plastic additive. And as a little tip from me, you can also add in the plastic adjustment, five to 10% thinner on top, just to ease the spraying properties a little bit. Oh, that's the final cleaning done. And to help me reduce static as far as possible, I've used the same anti-static cleaner as before. What I need to do now is go out, get my mask, grab my material, come back in, tack rag the car, and then as a final process before painting, I'm going to use an anti-static gun to help me reduce the static even further. After using the anti-static gun, I'm now ready to apply the wet on wet primer surfacer. For that, I've taken a clear coat spray gun and I would recommend a 1.3 to a 1.4 setup and we can use between 1.5 and 2 bar inlet pressure. For the primer surfacer itself, I have some choices. I can apply it in 1 to 2 coats or alternatively 
I like to apply a thin coat followed directly by a full coat. This gives me the best surface structure and texture. It also gives me the right film build and a very good even surface on which to apply my base coat. For the product itself, you can see I've got metal and plastic adjusted products here. I can, if I want, use the plastic mix on metal. But, to be honest with you, if you have the possibility to do the two-pot method, I would do that and you'll get the best out of the product in that way. So, oh, that's the application done. I need 15 minutes flash off time now, during which I'll clean the gun, get my base coat and blender ready. See you in a few minutes. That's the primer surface flashed off. Let's just take a quick look at it before we go with the base coat. As you can see, surface is nice and smooth, good levelling. If there were any bits of dirt in it, I could denib it now after the flash, but one of the real advantages of using the anti-static gun is that you get a really nice clean job like this. So. Let me go and get my uh, base coat and blender and I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Hopefully you'll have visited our YouTube channel or websites before and you will have seen the base coat in application. If not, and this is the first time, let me just run you through it very, very quickly. What I intend to do, spray my blender in this kind of area here and I could go right to the edge of the panel. It has no effect on the colour. Once I've got my blender on in a single closed coat or a light double, I'll change the pot take my base coat and spray out to the widest area first yeah and then move inside a little bit just finish the blend with the second coat the important thing as ever is to make sure that I make a good connection between the base coat and the blender so that everything's smooth and joined together when that's done I'll move to the new wing before going on to the bumper That's the base coat flashed off, everything's looking really good. Time we moved on to the clear coat, which in this case will be the race clear coat 8700. Now one of the big things with this clear is that you don't need to add additional elastic additive, which simplifies the mixing and still gives you a very fast drying time. Here's the final job and as you will have seen this process benefits greatly from using a multi-purpose primer surfacer which not only has great corrosion protection but also excellent adhesion making it particularly suitable for both metal and plastic substrates. Used together with our high tech base coat and our race clear coat 8700 it offers you a very reliable system for these very common repairs. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.